Yo, 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 yo. What's good, y'all, man? We got Tom Holland, Spider Man 4, Days Given 2, Minecraft, a Minecraft movie update. Say, like it up, sub, the bell is new. And, um, yeah. Hello there, my beautiful movie peeps, and a happy. Hello there, my beautiful movie peeps, and a happy first of December for you. Y'all are always bagging on me to decorate the set for the Christmas season. I get a little lazy and don't do it, but this year, I got up in the morning and I decorated. Mm, I see you got all the decorations. I see you. Decorated for you, and now he's gonna do a side flick. This better be good enough for some of y'all, all right? But today, what we're gonna <laughs> be talking about here on side flick is we've got a couple of movie news stories that I found interesting. For one, we got the confirmation that Thanksgiving 2 is official. We got an update concerning the upcoming live-action Minecraft movie. Tom Holland giving us a couple of his thoughts concerning Spider-Man 4, and it looks like his mind might have been changed a little bit. Really, that alone was so much more, so you guys know the drill. Leave me your opinions down below with everything we discuss here today. And for funsies, tell me what's on your Christmas list this year. I'm actually curious to hear what my audience wants. Nobody says me opening up in OnlyFans, okay? Maybe. You tell me fan lines win, still waiting for ha <laughs> can you do it? <laughs> next year. Alright, so jumping into yeah, things, we've playing. got a trailer a that got released for the Mad Max prequel called Furiosa. This is one of the trailers that we were anticipating because Brazilian Comic Con is happening at CCXP. Heck, it's said that this Sunday we will finally be getting the trailer for Godzilla X Kong the New Empire. They have been releasing posters. We will hey, finally happened? be getting the trailer for Godzilla oh, X. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, it's really coming soon. I don't know when though. Probably today, probably tomorrow, probably next. You know what I mean? We're not... Kong the New Empire. They have been releasing posters, so can't wait to do a breakdown of that trailer come Sunday for you guys. But for right now, we got oh, the... Oh, Sunday? Oh, Saturday? I don't know. Curiosa trailer. And I've been very much looking forward to this movie. I love Anya Taylor-Joy. I think she's going to nail it as a young Charlize Theron here in Furiosa. We got Chris Hemsworth thrown in here, and they're trying to make my nose look sexy and appealing for Hollywood. You're doing the Lord's work, Hemsworth. Thank you. And overall, looking at the trailer, I am sold. I think the story looks as big and grand and epic as Fury Road did. I really like what George Miller did with that last Mad Max entry and the world he's kind of recreated. So I am like 100% on board for this movie, but I want to be honest with you guys, and this has been the controversial thing with this trailer. When I saw this thing for the first time, and I recorded my reaction to the trailer, it's on TikTok, you can see it. At the end of my reaction, I was like... The visual effects are not really looking like the visual effects of the last movie. I know this is still George Miller, and they definitely have a lot of time before this movie's release, so they're still polishing things, but I noticed a kind of change in aesthetic from the last movie, and that's been a lot of what the internet has been talking about. Some people have gotten super defensive going, you idiot clown head off, it's VFX, so you don't know anything, stop talking bad about it. Damn, they gonna cry. They, they, they trying to defend the movie. Not a movie, <laughs> oh, no. And then there are for sure other people taking it way to the extreme, calling this a Spy Kids movie when I'm like, okay, no. The VFX look noticeably different, but I am not gonna say Spy Kids level bad. Now, I know the original Fury Road had a lot of CGI in it, and a lot of it worked seamlessly for me. There were shots in that last Mad Max movie I had no idea were visual effects, and they just blend in so perfectly on screen. Here, it feels like a lot of it is sticking out. So overall, giving it a treasure, I'm just being honest that the effects look a little different. And don't be mad at me. That's just my opinion. Moving on from there, we got the confirmation yesterday that Thanksgiving, uh, the horror movie that came out not even like two, three weeks ago, is officially getting a sequel. Eli Roth took to social media to let the fans know that Sony called him and said, yep, we're going to make another movie. In the video, he confirms that he's going to take all of 2024 to get the story right and then have the movie released around Thanksgiving of 2025. And uh, there's a lot of angles to this story. And that's mainly because Spyglass is one of the main producers of the Thanksgiving film and you know mm. Spyglass has been in the news lately for Scream fans being pretty pissed at them and I am going to talk about that for a sec but in a world where I can remove and pretend Spyglass doesn't exist and they didn't just you know taint one of my favorite horror movie franchises and pretending like it's three weeks ago before we heard all the awful Scream news just looking at it as someone who liked Thanksgiving Oh, I'm kind of hyped. I'm excited. I, I like what Eli Roth did with the first Thanksgiving movie. Although it didn't do anything to like groundbreak change the slasher genre, all the things I love about slasher movies were present in Thanksgiving, from the gory bloody kills to the fun but dumb characters, the amount of people that survive, a twist about who's mm. behind the mask. Like, it, this is a movie where, yes, I want 10 to 11 sequels up. So, yeah, as a horror fan and the guy who really enjoyed that 
movie, I'm like, yeah, I, I want to see more of that. That ending that they had set up a sequel, but we didn't know if the box office would warrant it. Now I'm excited they're going to deliver on another movie. Oh, but getting damn. on to the things where I understand why people are boycotting it and are just not looking forward to it because Spyglass just left a lot of us with a dirty taste in our mouths and it's hard to want to support them in anything. I've already seen a ton of people online saying that, yeah, they're not going to see this movie because of what they did to Scream and Melissa Barrera and they're going to boycott the film. And, you know, everybody's in their power to do that. I'm not here to tell you whether you should or even feel bad if you're excited for Thanksgiving too. It's honestly a super sticky situation and I just hope fans aren't really attacking each other for what side they decide to be on. But right now I can't lie, I feel a little hesitant to want to like jump up that high because I don't like Spyglass right now. Still though, uh, curious to see where you guys fall. If you put aside the drama and everything going on, you hype for Thanksgiving too? And you know what? This segues us nicely into this next little update concerning Scream 7 that really doesn't have anything to do with the movie. While we're still wondering what Scream 7 is gonna even end up looking like, a report did come out of over 1,300 actors and artists in Hollywood who have signed a letter condemning what- Damn. That's a lot of people. They call censorship against speaking out on Palestine from the recent firing of Melissa Barrera in Scream 7. This mm. honestly makes me feel really good because one of the things that was not sitting right with me when Melissa Barrera was fired is that no one stood by her side or was trying to defend her. Everybody remained quiet because they didn't want to end up like her. It's a scary thing to just say honestly how you feel about something like not wanting people to die and for a ceasefire, which crazy to think that's a controversial statement, it is good to know there are a lot of celebrities celebrities out there that are willing to yeah. risk their careers they've worked hard on to stand side by side with Melissa Burra and other people who have recently been fired just for being honest on their opinion. We'll see what if any changes are made here but you know it's still nice to see other people come together. Moving on here kind of a little interesting story I saw develop that I for sure wanted to share with you guys and get your take on it. So if you didn't know Jake Gyllenhaal just recently filmed a remake of the movie Roadhouse. Uh, originally starred Patrick Swayze. It's kind of a really cool movie. It's one of those 80s throwback super macho before Hollywood went woke movies. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. Oh yeah, baby, that's what I've been fighting for. Give me more of that man on man action. Screw that Furiosa movie, women. <laughs> Joking aside though, Jake Gyllenhaal is one of my favorite actors in Hollywood, so anytime he has a movie coming up, I want to see it. And if it's a remake of an 80s classic, yeah, I'm gonna check it out. And it was said to be releasing on Amazon, but now Jake Gyllenhaal's a little pissed. In a report here by Puck, it says Jake Gyllenhaal and Doug Liman were so pissed Amazon won't give Roadhouse remake a theatrical release that they got Jeff Bezos to screen the film on his yacht to convince him the film is still going to streaming so essentially this roadhouse remake that jake gyllenhaal worked hard on he's kind of mad it's gonna go straight to streaming instead of theaters other details mm. in the article said that they are man that's crazy already tested it with audience and they got positive reviews and scores and they were so faithful in the movie they thought the ceo you know jeff bezos watching the movie would have him change his mind on it but no, it's still just going to end up on streaming. That does make me a little sad because Amazon was one of those rare studios that did like to release movies in theaters and still put them on their streaming service. So it kind of makes me wonder why they didn't want to do that with this film. I guess maybe there's just a financial part that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's also just kind of like, man, just release the movie. You're going to piss off Jake Gyllenhaal, one of the greatest actors in Hollywood? You don't want him on your bad side. But this also feels like something that should have been like in the contracts or in discussions way before cameras started rolling and talent was signed on, don't you think? Like, yeah, we'll do this movie, but you got to promise us it'll go to theaters, not, you know, a wait and see later on. But this is why I throw it off to you guys. Uh, the new Jake Gyllenhaal movie, he's pissed it's going to go straight to streaming. Do you think the actor and director should have a say in whether it gets a theatrical or streaming release? And well, speaking of Amazon mm. Studios, we do have an update on the Coyote vs. Acme situation. Now, I do want to say, take this with a grain of salt. The source is coming from Dex Moy, which has gotten stuff right in the past. They randomly sometimes pop up and reveal some movie news and then things end up being right. But they're not usually like a go-to movie source. It's a lot of like gossip stuff usually. But here they were sent some information that the movie Coyote vs. Acme that at one point was supposed to be written off for tax purposes, same as Batgirl, but then we heard because of the found out cry, it got saved and they're going to sell the movie to a buyer. They're claiming here that Amazon is the ones that ended up buying the movie and will be releasing it Christmas Day 
on their streaming service and that they also have plans to want to buy a lot of the Looney Tunes and Hanna-Barbera content for their streaming service. Okay, we had heard that mm. somebody was going to buy the rights to Coyote vs. Acme and I was hoping mm. it was Amazon and the reason I was hoping it was Amazon is because they've been known to still release their streaming movies in theaters but after the last story we just talked about looks like that hope is lost i guess in a world of beggars can be choosers it's either you know get this movie written off for tax purposes a race from existence never to be seen or have it be released just not in a movie theater and on streaming service with amazon well i'm gonna take the option where i at least get to see this movie and yeah. if the news is true it's kind of crazy that they would release it that soon i mean that's like 25 days i mean they gotta drop a trailer like within the next couple of days but it's also smart because it was just recently talked about it was all over the news people were uproaring if you buy it now and then release it you know maybe like six seven months later in movie news times that's like ancient history it's like oh the coyote vs. Agme movie so maybe it's kind of smart that they release it now while it's still fresh in a lot of people's minds and you know what i would consider it amazon's present to me for christmas if they're releasing it on christmas day but like i said for now this is just a rumor take yeah, a grain yeah. of salt we'll see in the coming days like we'll know within a week whether they did or not because they got to release a trailer and start marketing it somehow let me know what you guys think about amazon possibly being the ones who bought coyote vs. Agme. moving on from there we got an update concerning the live action minecraft movie uh we knew once the hollywood strike was over this is one of those films that they wanted to put into high gear to finally get made and here deadline is reporting a couple of new cast members it says here minecraft warner bros movie adds danielle brooks and sebastian eugene hansen these are now two actors that'll be joining mm -hmm. alongside jason momoa in the live action minecraft movie we don't have any details really about what their characters are but we do know their names it says here brooks will play the role of dawn while hansen will play the role of henry i uh, just looking at them i gotta assume henry is the minecraft kid you know he's gonna represent all those kids right now who are heavy on minecraft and probably get sucked into the minecraft world while jason momo and brooks i don't know maybe try to get him out of that minecraft world we still just don't have any idea the only thing that's really making me hyped about the minecraft movie because sorry to break it to you guys I, I was never a minecraft kid kind of a little bit past my time i know I'm, i i played runescape does that count but the thing that is making me look forward to the movie is director jared hess this is the man who brought us napoleon dynamite and the iconic masterpiece oh uh, no, uh, natural labor Okay. Not totally break. The humor of the Minecraft movie is about to be next top level meme amazing, and that's what I'm excited for. But you see, uh, these people have been added on to the Minecraft movie. Does that get you excited? Bringing us here to some updates concerning Spider Man 4. Feels like we've just been talking about it a lot the past couple of weeks, and well, for good reason. We want an update on this, man. What's going on, Sony and Kevin Fagoli? Well, recently Tom Holland was doing an interview and gave us an interesting insight into what's going on with Spider Man 4 and comments seem a little different than the last time he talked about the movie he says here all i can say is that we have been actively engaging in conversations about what it could potentially look like for a fourth rendition of my character whether or not we can find a way to do justice to the character is another thing i feel very protective over spider-man i feel very very lucky that we were able to work on a franchise that got better with each movie and got more successful with each movie which i think is really rare and i want to protect his legacy so i won't make another one for the sake of making another one it will have to be worth the while of the character and the mm. reason i found that statement kind of interesting and it felt like tom holland changed his tune a little bit is because a year ago he gave us an update on spider-man 4 and what the story and kind of things we're working on and he sounded a lot more positive this was his comments a year ago he said it was myself amy kevin feige rachel sometimes other executives from marvel will sit in he says it's a collaborative process the first few meetings were about why would we do this again and i think we really found the reason why i'm really happy with where we're at in terms of the creativity so a year ago when yeah. we were hearing all these rumors about what the spider-man 4 story could look like tom holland was sounding very happy yeah, with the creative happy. process and then most recently I gave you guys an update where Scooper mentioned uh, Sony and the creative team have changed their minds on what they want Spider-Man 4 to be. We're hearing rumors that it's not going to be so much of a grounded story, that it might not be a street-level Spider-Man story, that it might involve the multiverse again. It'll be a setup for Avengers Kang Dynasty or one of those Avenger movies, and that Sony really wants to include one of their spin-off characters into that film. And now we're getting comments of Tom Holland going... Yeah, we're talking about it, but I'm not going to do it unless this movie's right, unless... Yeah, he's like, I don't do it, so Miles Morales? 
Miles coming back? Miles gonna be in the movie? He said, I don't know, so hey, we might not get time to I don't know. They do the character of justice. We've had so much success. I don't want to ruin it. A year ago, he was happy with the movie. Now he's talking about, I don't want to do it unless it's right. Yeah, he's he like 50-50. Feels like something's changed, and even Tom Holland feels like it might not be the right direction to go. I could definitely be reaching here, pulling a Mr. Fantastic Four, and looking too much into these lines, but... It's Spider-Man. This is what I do. I live and breathe this character. He's on my Christmas tree. I just want this movie to be good. And I just desperately wanted a grounded street level kind of MCU separated Spider-Man movie. We're just focused on Peter Parker being Spider-Man. Let me know what you guys think about Tom Holland's statements and if you feel the change I do. But that is all the movie news we're currently going on right now, guys. I want to thank you for taking time out of day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care. But anyway, man, like it up to my channel. Let me know what y'all think in the comment down below. And um, yeah, let me know what y'all think. I'm new. All right. Peace.